Welcome to Lost in Criterion, a podcast where we talk about the Criterion Collection and our feelings, appropriate or inappropriate, about it. Um, I am one of your hosts, J. Patrick Dorgan, and with my good friend... I am the Adam Glass. Today, Not to be oh, confused with lesser Adam Glasses. This is the original. I'm walking all over you. Alright, it's okay. So, our film today will be The Killer by John Woo. It is a 1989 film that features guns, guns, and more guns. Um, lots of guns, lots of guns in this It is notable as being, the way I noted it, is it's the first film uh, where John Woo uses his theme of doves as the, as yes, the first, it's yes. where it's introduced. Um, I think it's... And he really, he really jumped headlong into the doves. Yeah, he said, movie. you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do doves. And then he doves. just went for it, man. So, Adam, <laughs> before we begin, I'd like to know, what are your feelings about the film? Just as a general. Oh point. man, we'll get we'll get more into this, I'm sure. But in general, I liked this movie. Um, out of all the John Woo movies I've seen, including Face Off, this is one of my favorites. Probably <laughs> my favorite, but, <laughs> but like, but Face Off <laughs> is gonna. It's oh man, it's a tough call between Face Off and The Killer. <laughs> what are you talking about? Well, you see, Face Off had John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Right. And they traded their faces. And it's a wonder that that set didn't explode. <laughs> having the two of them. The two craziest this, men in Hollywood this, in one film. Out of out of all I've seen, I would name this as, as the best John Woo movie. Okay. I really would. Um, um, okay. I would actually say yeah. I would agree with you probably on that. I'm, I had not seen it up until we watched it for this recording. But now that I have yeah. seen it, it's definitely going to... I would say it's probably my favorite, too. So this this movie is one of I mean obviously all of John Woo's uh, work in Hong Kong in the eighties and early nineties was in the same sort of uh, he called it heroic bloodshed I think uh, colloquial we could call it gun fu uh, I like to call it gun kata oh wait that's a different gun, film gun kata works through gun, Do you, gun yeah oh, gosh. <laughs> no the, no the, I know what's the name of that film now, you should never what's the name of uh, film? was that Equilibrium no wasn't Equilibrium. Okay, yeah, it was Equilibrium because the second one is the one with a really yeah. weird name, like X versus Seven or something like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now that we're through that, we don't yeah. have to bring that up again. <laughs> yes. Uh, so uh, it's it's no certainly this affects both those movies. Um, that sort of synthesis of hand to hand martial arts and, and small arms combat, <laughs> and a, um, a lot of small arms combat. Yes, a lot of jumping, a lot of sliding, a lot of throwing yourself backwards as you as you fire with the with the strange premise that perhaps the propulsion of the bullets is what's propelling you backwards sliding across the <laughs> wooden right, <force>. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> shot. So there's a lot of a lot of vague unrealisticness about that, but it's it's entertaining to watch in a in an incredibly violent way. Um, so yeah, this movie is very, very violent, but it is as as with many, but not all of John Woo's films with Chow Yun Fat, who stars in this movie and stars in most of his Hong Kong work. Um, it is a movie about redemption, a movie about honor and friendship, and a movie about killing a crap ton of people. Yeah, it is, it is definitely a film about killing a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So the basic premise of this one is that our hitman... Um, is is after somebody in a nightclub, and in the ensuing firefight, he accidentally blinds Jenny, a nightclub singer, um, and he feels really, really bad about that. So he gives up killing, and uh, tries to take care of Jenny, who doesn't know who he is because she can't see him, um, and she falls in love with him. They fall in love with each other, really. Um, that should be that's how that's worded, uh, and. He decides he's going to pay for the surgery to save her dying eyesight, 
and he needs the money, so he takes one last job. And as with any one last job in a movie, <laughs> things go to crap. Which so he's one he's one day from retirement. <laughs> Just getting in, too old for this in the meantime, shit. Yeah. In the meantime, Detective Lee and his associates at the at the police department are hot on his trail. Um and they become friends. Okay, well, speaking of his last one last job, I gotta ask a question that, that weighed heavily on my mind. How do all these people know how to drive speedboats so expertly? I, uh, I well, it's Hong Kong. Okay, so here's it my is thing: a city okay. surrounded by. Water. I understand that, uh, but here's my thing. Okay, uh, I understand why they all can shoot guns really well. That makes total sense in their line of work. Okay. Uh, See, that shouldn't make sense, though, because Hong Kong is a city where, where guns have been pretty solidly out. I for. know, but you, they're police officers and assassins, so... Police officers and assassins. It's, it's at least be. semi-believable. My, my issue is that they are not driving speedboats. They are, like, doing crazy things with speedboats. And, they are super driving speedboats. And, and, it's, and it really took me out of the movie for a minute, and I don't know why, but as soon as I saw it, I was like... Nobody, I, I don't know. It's just like what? I, I, Why I assume are we all using speedboat culture? Right. Everybody, everybody drives a speedboat from the age of like three, this, right? This is the carefree nineteen eighties. Uh, have you ever seen Miami Vice? Uh, in the eighties, everyone knew how to drive a steamboat. Okay, a steamboat. <laughs> everybody knew how to buy. going down yes, the Mississippi. The eighteen eighties. The eighteen eighties when everyone. <laughs> Everyone knew how to drive a steamboat, and they had steamboat chases in all of their action movies. <laughs> that would be <laughs> wonderful. Uh, wow, we are... Okay, yeah, but yes. I, I just uh, wanted to point so, that out, because I, that really somehow yeah. bothered me. You mentioned you mentioned the dubs already, so what, let's, we let's haven't, start oh, there. Did, we, did I mention the dubbing? What? The, oh, the dub. dubs. Dubs. That's the next film. I'm Not getting confused. Yes, yes. Uh, for, for, we'll get into this more, but we both... Uh, unfortunately, could not find a legitimate copy of Hard Boiled, and the one we ended up watching online was terribly dubbed. So, yeah, well, but that is that is that is for the next conversation. Sorry, back this to the is, killer. This is the killer where we found legitimate copies that were good. Um, yeah, my copy and, was great. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, the symbolism in this movie. We talked about the doves, not the dub. Sorry. Uh, it's okay. You're allowed to make mistakes. I forgive you. Um, the doves. Uh, we open in this movie in a church, um, and we we immediately come back to the church after that first firefight in the nightclub, and we come back to the church actually at the end of the movie too. I mean, it's the the church itself heavily symbolic. Um, as it turns out, uh, despite his penchant for, for incredible violence, super violence, ultra violence, if you will. Um, John Woo is a Christian um, who, uh, who wanted to make a movie here specifically about how anyone can be redeemed. Um, so, Chow Young Fat's character, Ao Zhang, um, is, is out for his redemption. And there's to that poignancy he, he hangs out in a church a lot. Yeah, yeah. Though the first time we're in the first time in the church, he's getting his job. They are meeting at the church just because it's a secluded place. Um, the second time at the church, he's having bullets pulled out of him, and as he as he pulls bullets out of his back, or as bullets are being pulled out of his back, um, he he takes a very uh, pained look at the crucifix and. Uh, and decides to change his life, staring at the cross. Um, so it's, there's a lot of uh, obviously very blatant Christian imagery in this movie, but but it plays it plays to a broader a broader message of redemption. And I have a problem with that. Okay. Um, here's my problem. This movie is about how Ah Jong uh, can be redeemed despite being the best assassin in Hong Kong, basically. I mean, that's not explicitly stated, but, but yeah. obviously he's killed a whole bunch of people. And when they need a job done, for instance, at a very public 
national festival, uh, the Dragon Boats, he's the one they come to, to do it. Um, <coughs> the problem with a message of anyone can be redeemed in a very violent movie is that the bad guy, by his nature, cannot be redeemed. And we have a whole bunch of bad guy underlings who don't get a chance to be redeemed because they're just there to die. <laughs> but, like, okay, well, redemption's a pretty major theme in a lot of, like, sh you know, action movie, violent action movies. And yeah. there's no, always no, the certainly, assumption this that, is that, not... that the, um, this is not a unique state of affairs, that the, the minions yeah. are discounted from that particular uh, theme. <laughs> Yes. Well, they had their chance. They didn't have to it's shoot at him. It's not, it's not completely tied to John Woo movies or even just this movie. Um, but it's, it's certainly, it's certainly something I've always found a little off-putting about these sorts of stories. That, 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 if the message is literally anyone can be redeemed, which it is because we're taking a very bad, bad, morally anti-hero, um, and, and redeeming him, but we're redeeming him through even more death, yeah. violence and murder and death. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's it's justified here within within the realm of the story in that there's no way they're letting him out. This is the only way he can get out of the system is to completely dismantle the system um, through violence. Yeah. Though alternatively, I mean, he knows enough that he could dismantle the system through. Legal system. If you yeah, to. that's uh, but, well, but then yeah. I think we're all, we might also be missing <laughs> it. We might also be so. missing a cultural point there because it sounds yeah. several times that he is perfectly willing to die. He's just not willing yeah. to give up on Jenny, his love, and so yeah. the the issue is that he wants out of the system, but he has to get out of the system in a way that protects and helps her. Yeah. And I, He's got to get out of the system on his terms. Yeah, I mean, like, so. if he were alone and he wanted redemption, then the film could have been him testifying for an hour, for two hours, yeah. I suppose. But he has yes. he has his legitimate reasons why he. Yeah. Well, I mean, they are within well, the story. They are legitimate reasons, I suppose. Yeah, within the within the story. Within a realm where Hong Kong is full of people shooting guns that propel you backwards at high speeds. Yes, yes. Uh, so that opening scene at the church to to get to get back into it. Um, there was a great little moment uh, where his handler. Um, from, I don't remember his name. Yeah, we'll just call him the handler. Yeah, uh, where where his his manager, his friend, really, yeah, uh, he does kind of betray him but then goes goes out of his way to make up for that he's it's it's a redemption story for for fun as well um, I would actually argue in, it's in a more sort of a redemption story for him than it is for Chow young fat's character just because no, I think, I, he redeems himself as a friend 100 percent you know what I mean he yeah he pulls through to the point of his last breath yeah I, I mean he, he and he he spends every every moment of the rest of his life making up for the mistakes. He's right, made. and 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 redeeming himself. Very active. Yeah, and and it, very active. Exactly. I think. I mean, it's as le It's at suddenly English is hard to speak. It's at least as much of a story about his redemption as it is about Chow Young Fat's character. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they're they're sitting in the church. I wanted to. To mention, oh, and he turns to Chow Yun Fat's character, Ozong. He says, Do you believe all this? Kind of motioning at, at all of the iconography around. And he, his response is just that he finds it comforting. And then the very next time he's in the church, it's very clear that he's he's taken less of a comfort and more of a, a active approach to redemption and forgiveness than, than the rest of the than, than what he had been established at before. Yeah. It's it's very poignant in his in his I suppose his turn is very it's very quick at the beginning so we can get into the rest of the story, but it's still it's, it's <laughs> Yeah well Yeah. It's this. it's a pretty good you mean you can really feel that he's changed. I mean and you and you yeah. even see it on his face when even before the church scene, like when he 
deals with Jenny and sees what he has done, he you yeah. could see it. It's very good acting. I mean, he does a great job of portraying that that realization that he's done something he didn't want to do. It was not anywhere in his list of things he was going to do. And I thought I thought there was really good acting there. No, no, Chow Yun Fat is definitely a great actor, and he's got a very emotive face, um, and, and very emotive voice, and occasionally I can understand what he's saying. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, um, but yeah, he's, he's a great actor, he's still a great actor. Um, though I don't know, I guess I haven't seen him in anything since Crouching Tiger. Hmm. I yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's made whatever. recently, but. I think I just switched those. But, but, you know, that wasn't, that wasn't that long. Anyway, so um, he uh, injures Jenny, has his change of heart at the church as he's about to die, comes back. Because um, that's that's one thing about these movies is I think I think in Heart Boiled, it might have been the killer. Uh, I watched these kind of back. So did back, I. So, so this is they're, they're both we we probably should have just done them as um, one podcast, but we could have, but we're not. Anyway, in one of those movies, uh, it says. Uh, you know, a single bullet can take a life. That's they're talking about this reverence for for weapons, and that is not true practically in these movies. No, um, it is not. Well, at one point, and I again, I don't know which movie it is, but they're like I think it was probably actually Hard Boiled. But they said like every shot that he sh- is that maybe the same scene. It may have been a different translation in mine. It's like every shot he takes I mean, ends a life. It may have been. The same yeah. scene, just different translation. It, it, and it's like he... It, it, and then, like, five seconds later, we see him loading some dude up with, like, 25 bullets. And you're like... Yes. Yes. In this, in this movie, the only the only time a single bullet kills anyone is if they're completely unimportant. And even the most unimportant people, even just the the mooks of of, of our bad guy, of... of oh, what's... John no, Wayne, no, that's, that's the hard-boiled is. guy. Shoot. What's the bad guy in that? Uh... No, no, no. In in both. Okay. In right. both. Um, it's really no. I've got his character name in there. I, the hard guy. It's there's a Johnny something else in the other, okay. The other movie. <laughs> but Johnny I'm Wong the and the other uh, one. Johnny Wang. It's Hai Wong. Hai Wong Hoi. Johnny Wang. I think is is what the subtitles called oh, okay. in, in my version. Um, I think mine actually <laughs> used is, his it name. It was a terrible, so. terrible chance. Yeah, I wish they had. Um. Anyway, uh, he uh. Even his mooks uh, take a couple bullets to go down, even when they're like shot well, in the chest. <laughs> we see that especially um, bad or in, the in the assassination that he does. His last job, where he assassinates the guy yes. on the pier, right? Yes. He he gets a he dead guy, like, shot through the right eye. through the head, right, right through the forehead. The guy is yeah. plainly dead, and then he puts like eight more bullets in the guy. Yeah. It's like, well, that's just wasting time. Yes. You might have put you might have put one done, extra one through his heart just to be sure, but like I mean, I understand I understand the double tap. You want to make sure he's down, but <laughs> yeah, it's like it's he like really, he spends like five minutes shooting this yeah. guy when he could be making his escape. But that's the way the film goes the entire time. Nobody yeah. gets shot once. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, obviously, because of you know the narrative of the film, he can't make his straight of escape because he has to be chased. He has to be chased so that Lee can see him take the little girl to the hospital and see that this killer has a heart and then And then they yeah, can fall blah, madly blah, blah. in love. But Well, <laughs> they do come. You know, they love. become they become they fall, they fall they, madly in friend love. Yes, they fall madly in like. That's a, that's one one thing that a lot of the, the material I read about this, um uh, there were there was some worry. Um and one one reason that this is less popular in Western culture than Hard Boiled, um, besides the very heavy use of symbolism in this movie, uh, is that the uh, the relationship between Lee and and Ajong, um, a lot of people felt seemed homoerotic. Really, and I don't get that. I didn't at all. pick that up either. Yeah. I well, I mean, obviously they're very. Close I did friends, not pick that but... up at all. Yeah, but. They're very close friends, and they're very they're very close male friends, which is an idea that I don't think um, 
especially Western culture, in the last 20 years or so, has really believed. Mm, I guess <laughs> maybe. We're getting... We're getting back now into this idea of bromance, which is a terrible word. <laughs> it shouldn't but, be a word at all. Um, <laughs> it shouldn't be a word. But it's it's but but we have this problem with close male friendship. Um, oh, no no homo thing too. Um, <laughs> gets into that um, where where people are afraid of appearing gay, so they they try not to be too close of friends to hmm. guys, but. But even in this, in this, um, first off, it's Hong Kong. It's it's really if there's anywhere in the world in 1989 that is a synthesis of the East meets the West, it's Hong Kong because it's it's Chinese colony owned by England. Oh, and man, um, was the fashion fantastic! <laughs> I desperately want to live oh, there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Sorry, it's totally an <laughs> aside, but okay. man, I want to wear blazers like it that is. and sh- really bright shirts. <laughs> it's what I want, but there is there is a little bit of a worry of huh. appearing homoerotic, and it doesn't it doesn't to me watching it. But I didn't, again, yeah, I didn't notice that but... the value of male friendship. Um, I, I love that. you too, Adam. Aww. Anyway, <laughs> and now we just lost all so, of our listeners. Well, good it's riddance. Okay. No, they're <laughs> they're fine. They're fine. It's, it's they're, okay. they're very. They're. I know. They're all adults. There's a lot of... All right. So, there's a lot of great scenes of them interacting, this sort of cat and mouse thing of them building their respect for each other. I think definitely my favorite is when they're having this Mexican standoff in Jenny's <coughs> apartment. Sorry. <laughs> and Jenny Jenny can't tell because she's, she's blind, or at least she's pretending not to be able to tell because she's blind that they have guns pointed at each other. Though, she admits to being able to see sort of shapes and shadows, so she ought to be able to tell that they're holding black objects. Or, or at least that at they're standing in really awkward poses. Uh, yes, they're really, really awkwardly standing for the conversation they're having, especially. Yeah. Um, but they give each other nicknames, uh, Shrimp Head and... Yeah, that's Ron. what I got in my translation. Um, yeah, um... They give each other nicknames, and they, they, they talk about how they used to play soccer together, and they establish this whole backstory about how they're, they're great friends from childhood who fell apart because one of them was, was a jerk or something, um, which, which is great uh, as, as a story just to tell her, but later in the movie, they really embrace this whole their old friends. Yeah. They have this mutual respect, but they actually start in that final fight, in that final uh, scene at the church, the big shootout, they start using those nicknames for each other. Mm. Um, they're calling each other by them. They've, they've become friends and to that point. And... <laughs> Well, I think it's really an interesting I point where I was going. I just, that yeah. also, like, back in Jenny's apartment, like, there's no reason that, um, was it, Inspector Lee would need to make up a story. You know what I mean? He can just tell yeah, he, doesn't he need does. To. And I think that's a really interesting thing that we see already at that point. He's not, decide- he's already decided that uh, Ajong is somebody he at least kind of respects. And is not going to yeah. screw over for no reason. Yeah. He wants he wants to know what his motivations are. Still, yeah, I think because he saw he he's already seen him make sure that that little girl was okay. And during the shootout at the beach, uh, Ajang made a point not to shoot at Lee. He was escaping. Yeah, he shot around he was, Lee, but he, he did killing, not shoot. He shot around him. But he didn't. He made a point not to kill him, even though he clearly had opportunity to. Um, so I think Lee is is at that point very curious about him. And you'll notice that as soon as Ajong makes his escape from Jenny's apartment, Lee and his partner go back in and they tell her everything, mm. trying to get her on her side to capture him at the airport. Um, well, I think that's another interesting but, point. They're very dead set on the idea of capturing him. Not gunning him down. Yes. He is a. I mean, we, they don't yeah, we know that he has killed many, many people. So they would be perfectly within their rights to just 
hunt him down basically like a dog, but they already have decided we're going to capture this man. Well, well, I think, I think, and you know, we don't really get this explicitly, but I think Lee, in his understanding that this guy has a heart, um, that perhaps intuitively knows that he's seeking some sort of redemption, um, and is hoping to turn his redemption into getting, pulling the triad apart, and uh, getting all of everybody instead of just this one assassin. Um, but, you know, maybe not. <laughs> maybe yeah, I'm reading well. too much into it. Uh, I did like the airport scene, just, just a quick note, because I just saw it in, in my, in my notes here, uh, of how terrible uh, Zhang's disguise is. Oh, his, ter- his disguise, it's yeah, it's one, oh, atrocious. One really bad mustache. Well, his, his disguise <laughs> is always like a <laughs> really bad mustache. Yes, yes. It's, it's so, yeah. I mean, maybe it's just the Chow Yun Fat has such a distinctive <laughs> face. Um, that it's always clearly him, no matter what, <laughs> what he's doing. Especially though on the speedboat, like though, the mustache on the speedboat made me... I laughed yes. so hard when I saw I was like, this is... Yes, yes. Really? They're all, they're all terrible mustaches. And there's no reason... What What is the purpose of disguising yourself with a mustache on the speedboat? Because anyone who sees him compare, then compared to, I don't know, when he gets back to shore and takes off his disguise, will just think, oh, he shaved. That's not a disguise. Yeah, yeah, a mustache is not a disguise. If he were not wearing the mustache on the boat and then wore a mustache the rest of the movie, that would be a disguise. Right, it, it would actually that be, would be a little bit more effective. people yeah. from recognizing him. Yes, whereas, whereas this, he's just, they're not thinking that one through. But that's okay, because uh, it, it, it makes for a very funny moment, because he looks ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, the, the airport um, scene, though, I have to admit, like, my favorite, the thing that kept going through my mind is, were airports, I, you know, were airports like this in 1980s? I have to, I, I really wonder, because I, I did not travel by airplane in the 80s. I do not remember. But, man, they can get away with a lot in an airport. I yes. mean, like, it's not even like, I'm not even talking about, like, guns. I'm talking about the fact that he gets on the, yeah. the, the like, the baggage check conveyor and just rides it into the booth. It's like, yes. wait, nobody's yes. going to stop him? Yeah. I don't know. Apparently not. Apparently, ho- or, <laughs> apparently airport security in Hong Kong in 1989 was not <laughs> Right, right, um, exactly. Because, like, you can... And, and, and you have to recognize anywhere in the world, pre, pre-9-11 pre airport security wasn't... It wasn't great, great, but I don't think you could ride picture. the conveyor belt into yeah. the booth. Like, I no, think that was not. probably, probably something not. you were going to be stopped for. At least, at least the guy. It's gonna be like, get off my conveyor belt. belt. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we get nothing. <laughs> they just ride it the whole way in. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of little uh, unbelievabilities for the uh, sake of the narrative, and that's oh that's yeah. I just thought that was really funny to watch. We'll get into it, but that is. I do like that that in this movie, um, Ajong plays the harmonica in a very lovelorn cowboy sort. And of I play. love that it blends in with the background music. I thought that was pretty slick. Like, yeah. We find out that yeah, he is yeah, playing yeah, the no, background that's, music. It's pretty sick. Yes, he is playing the background music. It's it's great. Um yeah, they do that in Home Court too. But it's it's one I always like seeing yeah. that happens where someone someone on screen is playing playing with the rest yeah, of the Yeah, it's background. always nice. We're playing them. Yeah. Oh speaking um, of unbelievable things, I have one more that I have written down here that I gotta bring up while I have a chance. Is Okay. The fact that apparently in Hong Kong Synchronized car driving is a sport, uh, as far as I can tell. Because at the <laughs> scene where they're at the the lake house, right, where Lee and mm-hmm. him really, where Lee and Ajong become friends, where like he's yeah. trying to get Jenny out of the lake, like that house, you know, he's planning to take her away, right? And Lee comes and stops him, and then they both get ambushed by the triad guys, right? There's a few scenes where the triad cars drive and like they synchronize jump out of the car and roll. I was like, when yes. did when did synchronized car driving become an Olympic sport? Well, they're very they're very good at what they do. And what they do is So what I was thinking cars. is that we <laughs> have a duty to establish the modern pentap- pentathlon, which involves car diving and gun shooting. Okay. <laughs> okay. Possibly okay. speedboat driving Lots too. Of- what do you think? 
speedboat driving. Um, perhaps, perhaps a a long distance jump, uh, a a sort of long jump equivalency of how far you can slide across the floor. While <laughs> or a table. Jumps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or a table. <laughs> how many tables you can dive over? Um, and still land in a perfect roll while emptying an entire clip. This is good. Um, except is gonna, for one bullet, because there's always yeah, one this bullet. This is going to be a great sport. All right, sorry. I just, I yes, that, that one. Be, the gun con. I just, I'm just saying that one took me a little bit out too when I saw them like tuck and roll yeah. in sync out of the car. I was like, guys, I don't care how well trained you are. No, just no. They were good. Yeah, they're very good stunt just, men uh, in this movie. Yeah. I mean, obviously, any 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 John Woo movie is going to have amazing stuff, man. But uh, but those those guys put a little too much planning into the, <laughs> yeah. of the car. Yeah, they, they just they put a bit a little bit too much panache, just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh goodness, I do, I did love that actually. So um, I don't know oh, where to go. Well, now. I, there's uh, well, we could talk about the ending, which has a lot to be said about it. The other thing I wanted to point out that I meant, meant to mention at the beginning is one of the things that is pretty well noted in a lot of the commentaries on this is that one of the major major reasons this is such an important film is the amount of influence it's had on other sort of assassin and a- action movies oh, yeah. since then, and not just with the the artistic style and like the uh, like fight style. I mean, obviously John Woo films have had a huge effect on the way people choreograph fight scenes, but just on the themes and stuff featured in it and the way he portrays those themes have shown up basically nonstop since then in every film you can think of that has to do with an assassin. I mean, like, they they mention, like, in oh, yeah. the commentary, like, uh, Leon the Killer and all those things all have, you know, homages to this movie not rather than some other movies yeah. that you would think of. It's this film. Yeah, yeah. This movie, this movie. Um, I mean, while it sought to be a synthesis of Western action and, and Eastern action, what it ended up doing was just heavily, heavily influencing the way Western action. Right. Was it really shot became out. less of a synthesis and more of like a new start. Yeah. A new this is the way we are going yeah. to do action films, <laughs> and a spe- specifically yeah. action films where the main character is an assassin. And I was, oddly enough, I was thinking about this, or I was, what was I listening to? I was listening to another podcast the other day, and they mentioned the fact that there was a period in time in the 90s where every main character was an assassin looking for redemption. Yes. Or, you know, not every, but like, like even movies <laughs> that weren't assassin movies yeah. had an assassin character. And I feel like this really set that off that, like, you can tell a story about an assassin. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's and and a lot of John Woo's work leading up to this was the same way. I mean, I Hard Boiled was the first movie in which Chow Yun Fat's character was actually well, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, not just an anti. But, but this one is the but, one that's sort of noted as being the one that. Well, I think this is the one that actually made it out of but, Hong Kong in time to actually influence Western yeah, culture. This is yeah. This is this is this is the best of that bunch. Um. So, anyway, um, we were talking about symbolism, and I mentioned the church, but we didn't actually <laughs> didn't actually get into the birds. Oh. Um, there's a yeah, lot but, of birds. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a symbolism, lot of candles, but, but a they're lot of not. Birds. It's like... <sighs> I'm not entirely sure what the birds stand for as to why there's so many birds. I don't know. Just I think, it's, yeah, I think it's just like, this is an um, important scene. Please focus. Yeah, please focus. <laughs> Watch out, they might boom. Um, and obviously, John Woo uses a lot, and and I I mentioned jokingly face off before, but the the climax face off also takes really place. Really joking, in a church um, full of candles and birds. Okay. Yes, I was face off is a terrible. Movie. <laughs> Just checking. I will I will go on record. Um, I I regret having seen. I'm face-off. proud to say I've never seen but, it all the way through. All the way through. That is that is the law well. That come on. Oh, I, I mean, everybody has TBS. <laughs> it's true. that's that's for an L. Do they do? Uh, are they doing Thanksgiving marathon? <laughs> that would be TBS? so awesome. It's like two days straight. Oh. Face off. 
There's no connection to Thanksgiving whatsoever. Yes. Well, we don't have a Thanksgiving movie, so we got to show this. Yeah. yeah. Maybe this and Broken Arrow right. back to back. So, um, but the climactic scene in the church, I guess I segued into that yeah. well enough. Um, it's a really, really long fight sequence. Oh, the last one? Oh. Um, Man. Yeah. I mean, we flow, we flow into it from the house and the whole thing. And if we count that as part of it, uh, the entire third act is one. Well, gunfight. and here's my problem. I understand that this is John Woo's thing, okay? But, like, that's my only yeah. major complaint about this film is its length. Some of these scenes are drawn out to an extreme. And I gotta admit, that final church scene, I lost focus. There, it, yeah. it just was like, oh, I, no, I really what? Did. And then I ended up getting to the end of the movie and realized that I w- wasn't paying attention to the last ten minutes. Going back and watching the last minute so that I get the only bit of dialogue in the entire last twenty minutes of the film. Yeah. And like to, to see what happens, the final conclusion, because, man, that is a long fight scene. That is really rough. Yeah. So, so, so within that, uh, Jenny decides to kill Detective Lee, um, but, uh, but Zhang stops her, but still lets her believe that she did it for no readily yeah. apparent reason. Um, I have no idea why they might have done that. And, and she doesn't, she is not angry at all, or even confused when it's very clear that he's not dead. Yeah, well. Minutes later. It's, a, it's an abusive relationship. Minutes later. I mean, obviously, there's a lot going on, and and she doesn't really have time to be any more confused than she generally would be as a blind woman surrounded by firing guns. Right, I feel so bad for Jenny um, the entire film. Like, that was yeah. my main takeaway from the film, honestly, is like, poor, poor Jenny. Yes. Um, she, finally, she finally goes completely blind while they're at the church, just before the assassins catch up to them. The triads catch up to them, um, and attack in mass, quite literally. Um, there's got to be like, oh, I, I'm glad that the bodies don't pile up in that last scene. <laughs> I'm glad they have they have sort of video video game video game. Yeah, courses. because that would be really pretty um, gross if they were like literally walking on piles of bodies. I mean, I, there, the movie would have to stop if that were true. Because we would have reached the point where no one could get into the church. Yeah, anymore. yeah, we would have reached the saturation point. It would have been actually pretty awesome if that were part yeah. of the premise of the movie, is that yeah. they defend themselves by <laughs> sheer number of bodies piled up in front of the entrances. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and they're literally pouring in from every possible entrance. And I like that the priest is only there when he needs to be there for... <laughs> so where is the priest during the first half of this gunfight? Or during the five minutes between when the Statue of Mary blows up and when he gets oh, shot. Hiding, maybe, I guess. There's... I don't know. Why hasn't he been... Uh, why have it... From the outside establishing shot, it seems to suggest that there's not a whole lot of ex- rooms outside of the sanctuary. Yeah, it's very much like church. a one-room church sort of deal. Yeah, and yet, and yet the priest has somehow survived up to that moment. <laughs> Uh, and not run away. It's very... He he kind of, if anything, takes me out of the movie. I think it's, <laughs> the it's that character. Um, yes, because why, why is he still there? Um, but he does, he does get Jenny out um, just in time to be shot and have Jenny kidnapped by the triad leader. Um, but so much... Jenny is completely blind at this point. They make a point that uh, she can't see anything. They talk about, and he and Ajahn still lies to her. I mean, he's trying to comfort her, and you know, a lie, a comforting white lie, I guess, is is a morally okay lie, at least in this universe. Um, we could we could argue that for centuries because yes, we and we're not going to do it on um, this podcast. But, that's for sure. We're not going to do it now. Let's assume um, that in super good uh, land, it's, it's an acceptable behavior. Yes. It's an acceptable behavior because Jenny doesn't get yeah. mad about it. Um, she, he, again, again, every time he lies to her, no matter what the level of lie, Jenny never, ever gets mad. 
And she's, I, there's, there's a certain amount of symbolism in her blindness in that she is so, by her nature, I guess, forgiving. Mm. She is, she is his redemption. Um, but it's not even an act of forgiveness. It's just that she doesn't seem to care. Yeah. And which really, yeah, it's, she's an, odd character and a little bit one of the harder characters to deal with in that is that she seems unbelievable yeah. as a character like she decides yeah. at the airport that she's going to save him when really yeah it's yeah. kind of you get into this thing where like she has n- no reason to save him because when you really think about it yeah. all she's really doing is hurting him because, like, she could yeah. let him get captured, could let him turn on the triad, could let him be put into witness protection, probably get to move with him to some other... You know what I mean? Like, we get into this thing where, like, really yeah. all she's done is actually make things worse by protecting him in that situation. So, of course, it turns out that Chao Yong, that so. character, Ao Zhang, was already in on the whole thing and already knew that they were going to capture him at the airport and came in disguise and all that. But, I mean, yeah. it's just... Well, he's... He's no dummy. Um, I do like that she starts yelling for him, um, knowing that knowing that he's there, and they just assume that it's the other guy, which is which yeah, is fun. It's a nice. It's the diversion to the of the of the, of the airport. The airport scene. seems a really nice um, scene that way. I want to know. Who, yeah, who are who's the group? The Japanese businessman. Did he hire? No, those? I think he just took advantage the of the situation. I think because. They are, Maybe. yes, they are definitely Japanese businessmen. They are all speaking Japanese. And they are saying what yeah. this translation says, as far as I remember. Um, yeah. Well, they're sending off, they're sending off Boss Man. But he's in disguise I, I, as Boss I think man. what it is, is I think he is just dressed like Boss Man. I think Boss Man Maybe. is a real Maybe. person. Okay, so you don't think he's, he's the same guy the entire, okay. I, right, I, I no, don't know. I can, it's impossible to know maybe from the way the film shot. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe he just kind of yeah. assumes the role and, and gets. Yeah, I mean, they're all in the same suit anyway. Yeah, I mean, all he had to do was so. find a pack of Japanese businessmen and follow them around, basically, wearing yeah. a black suit. I mean, it's not that hard, I guess. Yeah. So anyway. Um, oh yeah, back, back to the to church. Where, <laughs> back to where I was. Uh, back to back to the church at the beginning. We we jumped back. Uh, or at the end, uh, Jenny, the one last, the one last lie, I suppose. Jenny is told that there was a power outage, and then she discovers a it candle, because yeah. she touches a candle. Um, uh, and and she's completely blind at this point, and she's still well, not at mad. At the same time, I wonder if she's obviously she's not mad because that's her character's personality, but also like yeah. she has to also know he's lying to her. She knows she's getting more blind because yeah. everywhere on Earth can't be getting darker at the same time. So she maybe yeah. just accepts yeah. that he yeah. lies to her because he wants to protect her. I mean, it's it, it, that part of her personality is yeah. believable, assuming she is not the dumbest person on Earth. <laughs> and I don't so think we are forced to assume that she knows that she's going blind completely, and she's just accepting the fact that her yeah. the man she loves is trying to protect her. In a really stupid, not very well thought out way. It's true. No. no. All right. I mean, we'll it's, a, it's a possibility. We again, <laughs> we're probably reading way too much into this. Yeah. As we have a habit of doing. Oh no! No, I, I think. I think that. I think that. Okay. This is legit. I think we we have certainly read too much <laughs> into other things, um, even even in our first eight movies. But but I think this is that's a legitimate interpretation of this, and I like that. Um, certainly, she's blind, you know, not just physically, but blind to to his actions and blind to the repercussions. And she's she's very much protecting him. Again, like I said, she believes that she killed Lee at one point and actively did so. It was yeah. by no means an accident, and she doesn't even show regret for that either. Oh, it's not like she, well, has she says, like, oh, I didn't mean to do it, you know, some stuff like that, and so... Yeah. Well, I guess, okay, she does She does have regret. I'm she just... regrets it, but, I mean, like, right. she was totally willing to do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and no one tried to stop her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's kind of a... 
Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's one thing. There's no reason uh, for her to prove that she's willing to kill someone, and there's no reason for Ajahn to want her right. to prove that she's willing to kill someone. His his point of being at this point is not to make her more make like him, him. Like it's her. to make yeah. him more like her. Um, so having your having your angel fall a little a few pegs down doesn't. But the, uh, but doesn't then again, like you this. get into this whole thing that that scene was, I think supposed to be sort of borderline comedic in that like. We see her point yeah. the gun in a direction that is completely wrong. Like, it's off by a full two it's, feet it's or something. Definitely. And, yeah, maybe they don't stop her. But I think, again, we get into a sort of a meta thing where, yeah, it it is weird that they didn't stop her, but that's one of those things about movies where if you have a chance to make some kind of stupid joke, you take it even if it doesn't really make yeah. sense for the character to do it. Yes. So that is that is another another thing that uh, action. <laughs> yeah, here's through. this thing that's going to happen that doesn't necessarily make sense, but it makes the film seem more fun. Yeah, but it'll be funny. Trust me, it'll be fun. Um, so anyway, uh, during the during the rest of that gunfight, uh, Ajahn also goes blind, which I found very manner, surprising. As he, yeah, um, yeah, that was the whole it's, ending there. Was a very I was very surprised because by the I ending. suppose, yeah, yeah, I suppose in a way, it's I guess a, a purgatory sort of punishment for him to go blind in the same way that he blinded her. That the beginning of his journey, the event that kicked off his journey, is mirrored in in the events that ended it but he's the victim this time, instead of the perpetrator. Um, and to that regard, that is redemption, as far as, as uh, in, a, in a manner. That is, that is the sort of redemption we've hit, and that's, that's fine as the, as the symbol of the redemption. But then the two of them falling so around on the ground, awful. blindly searching, and not oh, finding... Oh gosh, that was just the worst... That tore me up. Yeah. I was like, this is really the most... I have literally... Yeah. This is the most depressing ending to a film possible, I think. That, was, is, in, that is incredibly it was, depressing and then, ending. It, and then I um, couldn't really... I guess maybe I've just gotten so used to the Western filmmaking style or something. But like, I was just waiting for them to at least find each other. And it never happens. Yeah. To, to, to die in each other's arms or to die, you know, having touched Something. each other or, or for just to hold hands while he dies. Now, Jenny, now, does, Jenny, not die. Jenny does not she die. Jenny does not die. But Jenny does not die. But oh, Charlie, yeah. in fact, dies alone That's and awful. blind. And it, and it kind of, in my mind, ruins some of the symbolism of the film, which is why I think I found it so upsetting. Yeah. Is he does. He seeks redemption. And you know what? He finds it, but he doesn't find it. Because it's like, uh, you know what I mean? It's He finds the redemption. He does the actions for redemption, but he doesn't get that final reward of his redemption. He dies alone yeah. and blind. Yeah. He, he dies the ultimate yeah. alone. Um, yeah. He can't yeah. even he dies, see he dies other very people alone. when he dies. Yeah. Yeah. And can't see can't see how close he is to to yeah and it's it's very it was very depressing but i also again really feel like in some ways it and maybe this is one of the reasons why this film was not as heavily like you know promoted in the united states it's possibly that this ending just doesn't jive with uh western audiences that well but like i found that was just yeah yeah i was like this is unacceptable <laughs> I, I was like what no. like all the I mean if they had even crawled to each other I would have been fine yeah yeah and, and they're about to and then they miss and, then they and miss. I don't know how they miss because he's not deaf he's just blind yeah. but I, yeah. I, I don't know maybe his ears are ringing it was a very it was that's true very and, close to his head. It'd be the it would be the first time in the entire movie where a shot within six inches of an ear actually yeah or, or, yeah, or even inflicted any on it uh, but, 
auditory damage. But no, yeah. I just I ugh, yeah. that I enjoyed most of the film, but man, going two hours and then getting that as the end was like, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah, and not only do we get that, then we get the triad leader taking, trying to take the coward's way out, and Lee completely breaking down. See that I him, kind of accept executing it as an ending to the film. That I can, I can accept that me better than the than the Ajong Jenny yeah. thing. It, it's it's him getting what he deserves instead of, and obviously Lee's got this sort of anti-cop mm. attitude. Because he's been shut down, they forced him to protect a guy he knows to be evil. Um, he's he's gotten yelled at for using his intuitive detective skills, which are obviously super <laughs> yes. given the course of the movie. Um, but uh, but still, to to execute a man in front of the entire yeah, course, I mean it's unacceptable uh, behavior. But when you follow the progress of the film, we do see that like. Ajong's purpose is to become more like Jenny in his redemption, but oddly enough, Lee's redemption is more becoming more like Ajong. Yeah. Becoming that, Ajong. getting that little yeah. extra bit of separation from the rules that allows him to do what's right instead of what his, yeah. he's supposed to do. To, to, yeah, to do it. To do what's right instead of right, and so I think I think it's it's a, it's yeah, a lot harsher a way to deal with it than I think um, Western cinema would do necessarily. I don't think they would have him like in a Western cinema. I assume it would be a really good punch across the mouth and like a quip or something. I mean, shooting the man. Yeah, yeah. In, in the Western cinema, he's still yeah, he's still like prison, it's. I suppose we he would have he would have punched him, and then there would have been a slightly comedic scene of him still rubbing his jaw as a jail cell. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, it was way um, more... But, I mean, it, again, it was believable in the context of the film, but, oh, man. Yeah. That Jenny Ajong uh, scene, ugh, that's going to stick with me for a while. That's one of the most upsetting endings yeah, to a yeah. film ever. <laughs> yes, it was incredibly upsetting. And, and you know, it's, it's fine to go for that. I, it is. Yeah? Because... Uh, because it's it is unexpected, and it's so unexpected, and and in a way, the fact that it's so unexpected it does it does. Although yes. I again like it comes down to this thing where it's it's an, an wonderful artistic expression to say, look, I just did something you did not expect, um, and that's great. But also, I do feel like it kind of ruins the uh, the theme of the movie by not rewarding the character for redeeming himself. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't get so. It. You kind of get into this thing this where, is, like, he, John Woo accidentally made, like, the most nihilistic film possible. And I do think it was an accident is, to do that. He, he, sought out, he sought out to prove that anyone can be redeemed, and then the one guy we've been focusing on his redemption, and just before he reaches it, Yeah, he just it's dies. like everybody can be redeemed, but nobody can. But not really, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's well. That's why. That's why I said. I, that's why I said at the beginning that the the friend character. Yeah. What's his name? Um, Ajong's friend character yeah. who redeems himself. Uh, okay, Sai. he is the is the only character who actually completely succeeds in redeeming himself in the film. He uses his yeah. every last breath, his very last breath, to redeem himself yeah. and succeeds at. It. He shows. Ajong's character that he is his friend. Yeah. And uh, he's the only character who actually redeems himself fully in the film. Following that sort of logic. Yeah. Um, and he still he still gets oh, incredibly yeah. punished for it, but his punishment is part of his redemption. And he he sees he sees it he has the honor. He knows that, that he, yeah, he he dies knowing he's been he, redeemed. He knows he because he sees a, a Zhang and sees yeah. that he has shown him what he meant to show him. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. I, yeah, but he also dies knowing that his death, right? Is Whereas a Zhang just he has he has yeah. laid down his well, and we get into another thing friend. that a Zhang's entire redemption is focused on getting Jenny's new eyes, and he fails. Yeah, yeah, 
yeah. John Woo made he, John Woo basically he, made the nihilist bible <laughs> you could, you could, you could, uh, you could almost write like he is certainly postmodern, and it's f- and I yeah. again I don't know that he it's actually intentionally did that. No, I don't think he did because because the interviews I I I read with John Woo um, suggest that you know as a Christian he wanted to make a movie about redemption and he ended at up at least not by the criteria <laughs> that we've set for the redemption, which is yeah. Yeah. A well, a yeah. like actually succeeding in the task that you set forth for yourself as part of your redemption, and b, yeah. uh, re- getting the sort of whatever your reward is for that redemption. Like our yeah. So now at this at the same time at the same time though, um, while while Feng Sai certainly got his reward in that they're clearly friends again and he's he's found his forgiveness. Um, one part of Ajang's redemption is that he's staying. He's yeah. doing the honorable thing. He, he does, do, but he he thing. fails at doing because the honorable thing, and that's I guess where he bec- yeah, he doesn't right. actually and I guess do that. I guess he's redeemed, but he's also not a hero, which is what the redemption from yeah. anti-hero to hero is supposed to be. He's supposed to die a hero. He dies yes. a hero in the sense that he's protecting this woman that he loves, but he fails in that he does not actually get her what she needs. And at the same time, she doesn't get what she needs, and the big bad is still yes. alive. and so... Yeah, exactly. So, if, if, if at the very least he had died in a heroic sacrifice to more directly save right. her from but him, instead we see... yeah, It could have been a yeah. little more... It's, I mean, I'm just saying. Like, I mean, maybe we're just looking too deep at the redemption theme and saying, like... Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I guess you could... Yeah. And maybe we're just going a little bit too deep on this. But I, I just feel like when I saw that ending, I was like, huh? There are levels There are levels where the redemption works and there are yeah. levels where it doesn't. And the fact that there are levels where it doesn't... Yeah, it, at least from the film, theme, yeah. It's, it's yeah. ultimately... So, well, there you go. There, there, that's the film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that boils it down. So that's uh, that's John yeah. Woo's. The so what, n- next, next time, week we're talking next about time John we don't Woo's know when. Yeah, yeah. Next time. Well, next time, I suppose. Maybe we'll release oh. this in two days. Maybe it'll be tomorrow. <laughs> you'll Maybe never it'll be know. Later tonight. But when we talk, when we talk again, well, you'll know right. because you'll see the schedule. But we're doing this long. Yes, before we, we have no idea. So next right. time will be John we Woo's no Hard Boiled, a film that. It was a, still another John Woo film, but much more well known in the. Well, I mean, John Woo film in that it's lots of guns, but it's yeah. much better known in the United States. So yes, and much fewer dubs. Yes, but lo- in, in, in our film. version, many, many more dubs. Eh? Eh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Here, yeah. I, 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 eh? see how that works. Yeah. Eh? See you next time. We'll see you next time. Talk to you later. Forgive Bye. us for that.